Hi, my name is Sridhar Rangayan. I'm the festival director of Kashi Mumbai International Personal Festival, which is having its 12th edition uh, right now. And we are in the third week of the festival, and you must have seen hundreds of LGBTQ films already. And you must have seen Love Spells and all that, the beautiful film from Turkey, directed by Umit Unal, uh, who is joining us today here. And uh, the two beautiful actresses of the film, Ajay Desjar and Selene Ujer. Both of them are here with us. Thank you for joining us. I mean, it's an uh, honor to have all of you with us. And to host the Q&A, we have an amazing person, Punita Gupta. So no. Punita Gupta is a queer uh, woman born and raised in India. Cinema has always been a way for her to find like-minded stories and to be able to self-reflect upon her journey. Her professional career started as an analog photographer. After the better part of a decade, she decided to make this jump to events. From pop-up yes. restaurants and food festivals, she moved on to creating and producing her own electronic music festival. This eventually led her to the Mumbai Film Festival, where she created the hospitality experience for the international filmmakers and artists and led the operations for two consecutive festivals. So fantastic, Punita. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you have a good q and I'll hand it over to you, Punita, to uh, carry on the Q&A with them. Um, it, um, I want to actually start by thanking you for making such a beautiful film and um, Ajay and Celine for bringing it to life. Your performances were um, so real and so um, relatable. Um, it, so we would like to hear about your journey as a filmmaker. So, you know, why don't you take it away and tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into this Q&A. Thank you. I, I started as a writer years ago in 86. I was quite young when I entered the film industry. And I, I, I wrote screenplays for uh, other directors uh, for a while. Then in 2001, I made my first film. And since then I've been working uh, in feature films, on television, um, advertising and everything. And uh, Love, Spells and All That is my last film and, I, uh, and my 10th uh, film as a director. So, uh, Omid, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to make this film. Well, most of my films are about women characters. Since I started writing, my, my very first script was about a woman, my aunt, and about her life and my relationship with uh, her. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and since then, stories of women always interested me. And uh, most of my characters in most of my films are women I like to tell their stories from their point of view and there are also uh, lots of LGBT characters in my films my very first film two of the main characters are gays and and um, there's another one uh, with like a, a lesbian uh, couple uh, there's one uh, about the love story between a young man and a transvestite and so LGBT themes uh, I was always interested in so I don't know where did the inspiration come but I live I lived in the same location where we shot the film Bukada it's one of the islands near Istanbul where I am right now yeah where she is now <laughs> yeah <laughs> And uh, I lived there for five years. And when I was living there, I used to walk around all the time. And I started dreaming about this uh, story of two women. It's, uh, it's a love story, basically. But it's also, it's like they're trying to get even with their past. Uh, like 20 years ago, uh, they had a love affair 20 years ago. And are, now they're trying to get even with that. Yeah. And they are from different classes, yeah. and uh, and uh, one of them uh, got sort of like ruined because of this relationship. The other one had lots of difficulties, but uh, she went on with her life in a in a way. But the other one, the poor one, yeah. got really yeah. destroyed, and uh, so it's like they're sort of like accounting for it. Like you mentioned that a lot of your characters in most of your films are queer based or yeah. have a queer theme. Um, you know, what does it take to uh, get into the process of writing a story essentially from the perspective of two women? I don't know. My mind works like that, first of all. I don't, I'm not very much into 
main stories. I don't know their language most of the time. I don't like, I mean, if you take like a very typical Turkish man, I don't know, character in a film, what would they talk about? Uh, I don't know, football, cars, women, and I'm not interested in those subjects. <laughs> and, men in India. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how they talk how they talk like I, so i i prefer to um, you know think uh, from a woman's point of view i know their language in a way better uh, i can make them talk better i think i have many male characters as well in my yeah. other films i they also talk, but I, I don't think they're very typical Turkish. Um, Celine, um, I have a question for you. So you've done a few films with you, Mip, and what was it? What was it like for you collaborating on this project? I've done actually one movie with him, which is called Ara. Yeah. Uh, which was my first uh, leading part, mm -hmm. and I did my masters in acting in the states in Chicago, and after I came back. I uh, met Umit, uh, being uh, amazed by his work before I met him. His female characters are deep and uh, extraordinarily open. The female characters are usually, unfortunately, uh, like guest stars or uh, desire uh, objects or something like that. Yeah. But Umit's storytelling was different and I felt that and I'm proud to say that, if you allow me to admit. Of course. Uh, I, I, I felt that before I met him. And this, this thing uh, excites me. That's why I'm always telling this. Yeah. And my first leading part was with Ara. Uh, I was playing a half French, half Turkish character. Uh, and after, after 12 years, and Ümit was my mentor and then my friend and my director always. I mean, we, we kept in touch. Years later, he called and said, there's the script and I'm thinking of you for Rayan. Yeah. And I was excited and I was so excited. So I couldn't touch it. I couldn't read it for a couple of days. I'm a, I'm a weird person. Okay. Uh, and then I said, life is in life. You never know what will happen. So I was in my personal life. Um, I was struggling with many things, with diseases, uh, breakups, and this love spells uh, and all that. All the story uh, fit uh, my attitude, or I don't know how you say it. It felt so right at that time. Exactly, yeah. Your performance was beautiful, and um, it felt so real and ethereal, you know. I mean, it was amazing. You did a brilliant job. Yeah, we're together, actually. Of course. It's, it's always like, with, with, of course. Yeah. AJ, um, so my next question uh, is for you. Um, what was significant about this project for you? Well, I was also an admirer of uh, Umit's work, uh, obviously. His um, incredible talent of uh, being able to write real dialogue. He's, he's incredibly good with that. And um, I, I always wanted to work with him. And uh, he knew me from theater. We did want to uh, collaborate at some point. And I just feel very lucky because they're both, Selan and Umit, they're both very, ex very experienced. And um, it was my comeback of, uh, of five years. I hadn't, uh, my last movie was uh, five years prior to this film. So it was just a very significant uh, comeback for me, really. I feel very lucky. Um, like Umit mentioned, we don't get many characters in Turkey uh, evolving around female parts. I recently just had the honor of uh, being a jury at the Istanbul uh, Film Festival, a national competition. And I just watched 13 films uh, in a row in four days and only two of them were evolving around female characters. So um, it's, and only one of them was shot by a female director. So uh, this is this is the main picture. This is the scenery in Turkey. So of course I feel incredibly lucky to be playing one of the best ones, uh, and be, to be able to to shoot it with such an experienced and professional actress like Selan. The other day I just yeah. remembered that as soon as I read the script, 
I knew the other person was going to be played by Selam. Oh, wow. I knew it. <laughs> and I told him, it. Imit will remember this. I told, I said, is, the, is, is, Re, is Rehan going to be played by Selan? I knew it. Uh, oh. and, you, and you kept that as a secret until now. I don't know why <laughs> I know. Me. Imit, Imit must know. <laughs> Imit, yeah, yeah. do, do I'm, you I'm remember joking. this, Imit? I don't know if Imit remembers this. Yeah. I sent the yeah. script to them, uh, but before I finished it, I was like at the uh, 15th page or something, and uh, I sent it to them. I said, look, uh, I'm writing something like this. Would you be a part of it? Uh, because I thought of them since the beginning, since the uh, since I started writing, and uh, luckily they liked it. And uh, then after that, we went on together, like looking for finance and everything, because um, this was an independent project, a very small budget independent project, because uh, none of the uh, big producers are interested in uh, producing an LGBT themed uh, film and we uh, worked before the shooting I mean we, we we shot this sort of like a trailer and uh, in one day we did this trailer I, I wrote a trailer script as if we made the film and we shot the trailer like two minutes thing and we showed it to like possible investors we, we weren't looking for huge money. We were like looking for a small amount, but still we wanted to, uh, we wanted some support. So we showed it to people. I put it on social media, uh, begging for, <laughs> <laughs> begging yeah. for support. And luckily some people came up and uh, we found some money. And my uh, director friend, who is also a producer, Typhoon Aiden, he wanted to be a part of it. And uh, so he became a producer partner and uh, he, he brought his uh, production team. We did it with a very, very small uh, crew. I think we were like, we were less than 20 people, I know, <laughs> most of the time. We shot it in 12 days and uh, without lights, without any artificial lights. We only had a couple of very small, like chargeable uh, lamps. It just adds to the, the the entire feel of the film because uh, yeah. because the frames, the way they're lit, it's very natural and it's very uh, yeah. you know not like uber stylized where it doesn't look real, you know, and doesn't feel real, yeah. and yeah. you're not able to emote when it's so overly done. But it's so beautifully shot, and even the even the framing and the long sort of it's you know long pauses or when you stay on somebody you know it, yeah. it's beautiful it gives you that feel yeah i have a very good uh, dop which i work with uh in most of my films tuksoy is a um, friend of mine he also lived in bukada luckily oh. and uh, tuksoy is uh, very adventurous and he loves uh, trying he loves making experiments so Visually, it was an experiment in a way, but it worked uh, wonderfully. I like the style of it as well. We, we just had a hand camera, no lights, very small crew. So we were totally free. We could go anywhere almost invisibly and yeah. start, start shooting our scene and just get away. So it was true guerrilla filming. It comes through. It's like a slice of real life, you know. It gives sort of like an intimate feeling, I think. Yeah. Uh, in most films, you get a very uh, sort of like a made-up uh, yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. And uh, this film is like as if we just went there and we shot it. And we did. Amit, actually, I wanted to know, um, so, you know, like you were saying, that it's very difficult to get, um, as Eddie was saying, that there are very few women-centric films and very, um, it's difficult to get projects like this funded, but now you are, you have a film out there. And what is the, you know, what is the conversation? What is the dialogue that you want this film to start in a society like, you know, what the kind of society that has been portrayed in the film or like even in an oppressive society, uh, you know, which is very similar, uh, like, all the things that I've seen in the film, it's very similar to how we are here in India. 
you know, it's very patriarchal and it's very, um, you know, uh, male centric. So what is the conversation that you want this film to, you know, sort of ignite? Most of the uh, LGBT characters in Turkish films are caricaturized and they're usually side characters. This film is trying to look uh, from the point of view of LGBT characters from inside. My idea was to create real characters, real problems, and through these LGBT characters to point at some uh, real problems of Turkish society. It's not only LGBT people's problems, it's also anybody anybody's problems. These class, class problems are everywhere. Anyone can understand them. Okay, there are, there's this in incredible uh, inequality and anyone can identify with that, even if they're not LGBT. We were thinking about, oh, what, we're, what are gonna people think about it? You know, are, is there gonna be a um, bad reaction to it? So far, very few bad reaction we had. In Antalya Film Festival, uh, we showed it for the first time. And at the end of it, there was this huge, Applause. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. It's it was wonderful. It was uh, people, you know, stood up and started applauding. I had I made other films that people liked, but this one was the reaction was really lovely. I mean, like people was full of, they really sort of loved it. And afterwards, the film you can feel like sometimes you they come and congratulate just out of courtesy, but this one was like really, you know, really, they showed it, you know, from the yeah. glit, glit, uh, from their eyes, I could read it. And um, then we couldn't show it for a while because of the pandemic, the uh, cinemas were closed and it was only shown in Istanbul Festival and got a prize and uh, I wasn't able to go there. The film couldn't meet the audience for a long time. And only recently in May, uh, it started in, uh, one of the digital channels, Mubi, in uh, Turkey. And uh, again, the reaction was incredible. People were sort of like waiting for it. And uh, there was this incredible expectation. I mean, it started like one midnight. They said it's going to start on Saturday, but uh, Friday midnight, they put it on. And people started watching it then and started writing on Twitter and sending me messages. <laughs> and on that Saturday, I, I kept having these messages like, oh, all, from all these people from any different age. And so I was quite, um, I can say this is one of my, how do you say, most um, accepted film. There is also some hate, of course, uh, I mean, I saw yesterday somebody wanted me to die, you know, <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> he, he wrote on my, under my interview that I should die oh. soon. Uh, but uh, they are very few. They're not, they are the people who didn't see the film anyway. People who see the film like it a lot. Uh, but people with prejudice who didn't see the film feel like, oh, it's one of the homo films. And so they there's this pre-hate. <laughs> if you actually look at it, it's a love story. So it doesn't yeah. matter whether it's two men or two women or a man or a no. woman or no. anybody, uh, because it's about two human beings and you know their interaction and their uh, sort of trials and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's great that, um, you know, film like people are accepting the film and people are applauding the film because it is, it's, it's a brilliant film. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Selen, I uh, wanted to ask you, um, how was it uh, to play a character that was, um, you know, that has been oppressed by society and victimized by their own circumstances? Every one of us, uh, have uh, a portion of those feelings, I believe. Yeah. So I had my feelings of uh, disapproval and disjudgment of the others. 
and uh, misunderstanding of the others and uh, suppressed by the others. Yeah. We are probably luckily one of those who made your their dreams as possible yeah. uh, types. Yeah. So Rehan, until that point, which the story of the movie begins, yeah. uh, lives lives or lived lived in a survival mode. Yes, uh, she just did what she can. So she was together with a man, mm. which is okay and which is. Uh, acceptable, but not desirable or chosen by her. Yeah. So uh, those kind of feelings or uh, periods of life portions yeah. we all have, I yeah. believe. Yeah. In in love affairs, in friendship uh, stories, in uh, professional life, yeah. uh, we all have some uh, feeling of misplacement. Uh, yeah somewhere yeah. in the story so it was uh, it was not easy but very uh, challenging and exciting to work on rehan even by telling this sentence ex- uh, makes me like excites me still yeah, yeah, yeah. and telling this in uh, 2099 like uh, which is shown in Antalya, which, which that year we showed it in Antalya in November, I remember. So I'm proud to be part of this story. Oh, uh, because I believe uh, it like, uh, not for uh, only these two, two women are gays, like for, like for men, women, gay, hetero, whatever. Yeah. For everybody, there is something in the movie. Yeah, there is. Because love, everybody feels love. Everybody searches love. Everybody uh, chains around love yeah. and yeah. stuff. So, um, Selin, what, what do you think was, uh, was there any part of the film when you were shooting that was difficult for you? The first scene is always, the first shot is always the hardest. Yeah. Isn't it, Ece? <laughs> 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 we, we both, uh, we both uh, love to rehearse. And we both uh, are um, very uh, sensitive about our work. So uh, I'm a lucky uh, person to have her as a partner. So uh, we were ready for most of the scenes, but you you are never ready, you know, when it started. So first scenes are my, uh, are always the tough part for me. Yeah, yeah. The first day, first scene, first whatever. AJ, do you uh, feel only that or... Um... What was the hardest for you to do in this film? I don't recall anything specific to be hard. Uh, I think it was just a journey that we had to walk together. I don't... Uh, maybe Salan will remember on behalf of me. Is there anything I, it was hard for me? Salan, I think she would know better. <laughs> I don't remember anything I'm, uh, I, I prefer to keep that as a secret, my dear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Between two British accents. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't recall uh, like a big thing, like general no. stuff. Okay. Ajay, my next question is for you. Um, you know, living in um, a society like ours, when I say ours, I draw parallels to the society that I live in in India and, um, you know, Turkish, um, uh, Turkish society. Um, you know, the two predominant um, emotions that people feel are guilt and shame. And, um, you know, one is always pushed on either side of choosing, um, you know, between who they are and who they are expected to be. So what is your perception and what is your perspective on that? I think I've been lucky because um, in, in the society I live in, like Selan just mentioned, I'm a person who could um, uh, fulfill their dreams, if you will. Yeah. And also, um, I, don't, I don't have much family. So uh, for me, living, um, living alone, being uh, an independent and self-sufficient woman, uh, I don't think I um, experienced much guilt for myself. But that exact same thing gave me the freedom uh, to be able to fight for others in that sense. Uh, my, I used my comfort zone 
uh, to be able to work for other women uh, in that in that department. You know, um, I'm in the actors union working for this department. Uh, we um, we put together the the Me Too uh, platform for Turkey. Uh, we're running it. So I'm in the board of directors for both of them. So that comfort gave me uh, the, 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 the zone to be able to fight for, for other minorities, if you will. Uh, mm. Selena, do you have uh, any kind of perspective on, um, you know, how we sort of uh, go between guilt and shame? And do you feel there is a mid path? Yeah, the there is a mid part. And we have to continue our lives as actors, for, for example, here, me and Ece and Ümit. Uh, in, in Turkish uh, film se- sector, or what's it called? Film uh, industry mm-hmm. and TV and mm-hmm. film industry. Uh, here I can speak uh, openly and uh, freely. We uh, cannot speak uh, usually about these topics, uh, about the gay topic or uh, LGBT themes uh, so openly. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. work. when I was younger, I was more angry about those stuff. Yeah. Now I'm saying find the midpoint and uh, portray what's real for you. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm trying to focus on that, on this... Rayhan, Eran, whatever, and uh, which sexuality or whatever they are, they're trying to uh, express something, some, uh, some uh, express something that is overseen, that is suppressed. Yeah. yeah. So and and I, I'm telling this story. So I'm believing in that and concentrating on that and trying to fit in middle of the things, because mm-hmm. otherwise you said fuck them. It's it's not that easy. You cannot fuck them. You yeah. live you in the society. Yeah. You have to be. You have to be, and to to be and to stand up there. You have to first stand up on your feet. Right. I'm I'm saying like of course first you have to be yourself. You mm-hmm. have to be honest to yourself yeah. and to the others. Yeah. I'm a, but you have to do this wisely. Uh, especially in those countries like ours and or yours, uh, yeah. unfortunately. unfortunately. I'm speaking here freely, as you see, my friends. AJ, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I have another question following up from this question. Um, you, um, you know, the scene where um, uh, Rihan is walking up the mount, up the hill um, on the first day they meet, uh, you know, when it's evening time and uh, Erin is following her and she says this dialogue where you know all the people that didn't want us to be together are not alive anymore right so there is nothing stopping us so my question was that do we actually have to get to that point in our lives where um, we say that you know there is no one around that expects anything out of us anymore so I can be myself in their case, that, that was so, you know, in their case, yeah. that was the situation. And even if their parents are dead, the society is, is always um, behind them, I think. Yeah. Uh, so it's not going to be easy if after they get together, yeah. but in, in, their, in their case. But Eran is an uprooted character. She's, um, she's, she's lost her home. Yeah. So I think uh, Rehan was her home when she was coming back to the island. She was looking, she was coming for after a lot of disappointment. Yes, she wasn't poor, but uh, to, as, the, the, as the actor playing this character, I have to defend uh, my own journey in the way that uh, she, uh, yes, she wasn't poor, she wasn't beaten up or anything, but she didn't live the life that she chose. For the film, the film is, is um, discussing whether this is a spell, uh, this is black magic or not. For Eren, uh, it's very clear she's coming yeah. back home. Yes. There, yeah. was, um, there was a lovely tweet I'd like to mention the other day. Um, the community, the, the gay and lesbian community in Turkey, they're, they're loving this film and they're, they're tweeting a lot about it. Someone the other day said, um, I wonder what, what Eren and Rehan are doing. Uh, did they did they go and join the Pride Walk uh, in Paris? And <laughs> uh-huh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. I really like. Yeah. I really liked it. I mean, and I, I and I thought, yes, they did. They joined the 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 Pride Parade in Paris. Yeah, because after the film ended, I was yeah thinking to myself, 
what happens next you know it always happens with a good story you know when you watch a film and it comes to an end and you're like what now you know yeah. i mean omit you should answer that question what now <laughs> well normally i finish my films with a finale with a you know i tied the knot in yeah. a more certain way but this one this one i guess is one of the rare ones that i left open Yeah. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen to them. <laughs> uh, uh, are they going to be together? Are they? Rehan is not going to live in the uh, same house, definitely. But are they going to live together? Are they going to be together? Are they going to? Uh, can they love each other? Can they be happy together? We don't know. But uh, I uh, prefer to finish it on a positive note yes. in yes. this way. Yeah. I think the hardest part of their journey is like she mentions Eren mentions at the dinner scene uh that um like the self-hatred becomes like a bad smell in you. They yeah. make you yeah. hate yourself. Yeah. And it becomes like a bad smell and you can't get rid of it. Yeah. I think that's the hardest part. Yes. To Uh, they have to overcome uh, any gay person, any LGBT person, I think, who lives in a society like ours. Yeah. And uh, they're, I mean, uh, as AJ said, they're free now. Their parents are dead. Their oppressors are gone. Yes. Except for the, uh, you know, general society. But AJ, ha Aaron has money so they can live abroad or whatever. Yeah. So, but still, It is still hard. Wherever you go, whether you're in Paris or yeah. in Turkey, yeah. you, you have to live with that because it's inside you. Yes, exactly. I think that's the hardest part they have to overcome. And uh, But I, I just wanted to leave it open. Uh, the film finishes the uh, with, a, with just a breath. Yeah. Uh, Selan, uh, I mean, Rehan, breathes in and breathes out. And with that breathe out, we just cut. And I love that sort of thing. I and the innocence of that laughter, you know, because yeah. that scene yeah. uh, in, in almost like when we're in the middle of the film where uh, Rehan says, let's just laugh, you know, that yeah. it just immediately brings you back to their innocence and when they were, um, you know, yeah. kids and when they were in love with each other. and. I think it also sort of ends in that high note because they're laughing and you don't know what's going to happen next because it's just, okay, now we have to process all this. In the first uh, version of the script, there was another uh, final. final. Uh, I mean, it was ending in a hospital. <laughs> uh, but I gave up. I, uh, I uh, wanted to finish it like this. So I think it, people like it a lot. Yeah, no. Leave that positive uh, note. I mean, uh, if there is anything, like what would you say was, um, Ejay, what was your favorite, I know because you're in the whole film, but what was your favorite scene in the film to shoot, like, you know, to act? Uh, that exact scene, scene that you mentioned, uh, when it, where I follow her up the road, that's a six page scene, I think, and it was uh, incredibly rehearsed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the, the lines were, you know, like meticulous. Uh, so it was really a lot of fun to shoot that scene that was such nicely rehearsed, you know? Uh, Selen, would you say that was your favorite scene as well? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> that scene was a long uh, one-shot scene and yeah. No, I mean, I, I would like to sort of just thank all of you for being here for this conversation and... Um, yeah. Thank you. Know, you. Um, Thank being you. gracious with uh, you know answering the questions and thank you thank you for the film thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. love from istanbul <laughs> love from asos love from <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow this was such an interesting conversation thank you punita for <laughs> making this wonderful conversation so uh, so real as as real as a film per se it was all like a planned conversation it flowed Yeah. organically and that was beautiful you know just like the film flows so organically and so real uh, thank you for facilitating that and thank you Umit, uh, Celine and uh, Eze for joining 
uh, this Q&A. So thanks a lot. And if you have any questions uh, for Umit or Celine or Ize, please put it in the comment box down below. And I'll make sure that they see it and respond to you. And there's still some more days of the festival still remaining. So please catch those many films right now. And also please join us for the award ceremony on September 5th. Thanks a lot for this wonderful conversation. Really happy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Everyone.